This is where Vancouver talks sports in the afternoon. You're on the Team 1040 and Rogers Sportsnet with Dave Pratt and Don Taylor. 3.20 in the afternoon. Welcome back to the Roadshow. David Pratt along with Don Taylor. We've got Dave Notice, the uh, general manager of the Vancouver Connection studio with us. And the boards are open at 280 team. That's 280-8326 on the Cell Star team. We will get to your calls in just a moment. Dave, um, let's let's get into what's coming down the uh, the, the pike, as they say. Uh, the Sedins are in their last year. They'll become unrestricted free agents next year. How big of, 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 uh, of a hurry are you to, to get them signed? Uh, I'm not in a hurry to get them signed. Okay. No. I mean, they got... Uh, yeah, they've got uh, a little time left on their contracts here, and and uh, I would expect that they're gonna, you know, they'll play those contracts out, and then we'll sign them to, you know, another two, three-year deal. I, mean, I don't think there's any any question they'll be back here in Vancouver. As so far as um, Nasland and Morrison, your thoughts about uh, what they've got to do this season to get a contract for next season? Well, I, I think that you know anyone who's in the last year of their deal is yeah. gonna, wants to play as well as they possibly can in, in order to to drive their own market value up. Uh, you know what they have to do. I don't think there's any special goals for for anybody in our team, but I think that uh, you know you want to have a, as solid a season as possible in order to improve as a team. And if our team improves, I think everyone's going to be in, in good shape after that. Dave, the general consensus is that in this town is that Marcus and Brendan had disappointing seasons. Uh, do you feel the same way? Well, I think in you know in certain areas they did. Uh, I think offensively, both players uh, are capable of more. Uh, I think Brendan uh, was not great off the start you know obviously coming yeah. off that hip injury i think it, it really did hurt him uh but at the end of the day you still look at his numbers and they're not yeah. that bad yeah. you know he's a 20 goal scorer and we just saw some guys sign this summer that scored 15 13 for you know six seven million dollars and i think uh you have to look at it and say you know what else did he do i think that he was um pretty good the second half and i thought he was you know he was um, very good uh in his own end with marcus can he score more goals yeah he can uh, but the one positive thing I would look at with him is he went from a negative, you know, minus player to a plus yeah. player, and he did a lot of good things in a, in, in a Canuck uniform this year that people did just never give him credit for. Do you think is he, he has a chance to uh, improve on his numbers this season because he now has an off season to have a Lynn Vigneault's way of dealing with players sink in? You know what I mean? Because it, it must have been a shock to his system last year, being demoted at times, being off the power play at times. Now he kind of gets it a little more. Well, I think so. You know, yeah. I think that uh, a lot of the struggles Marcus had were, you know, were created by Marcus. And I think a lot of them, we put a lot of pressure on himself uh, uh, to score. He felt like he had to score every night. And, you know, that's that wasn't the case. You know, we need him to be a good offensive player. There's no question about that. But uh, he has to be part of the system, part of the team. I think he did a very good job of working himself into that. I thought in the playoffs he was one of our most dangerous players night in and night out, and uh, I don't think there's any reason why he can't come back and have a better offensive year. Everybody talks about, you know, what are the Canucks doing? They're screaming. You know, they're not addressing the p fact that they need to have more offense, more goal scoring. Are you just hoping that you've got it with Marcus Naslin, with Brendan Morrison, if those numbers go up? Well, I think those those two guys can help. There's no question about it. Um, but I haven't seen anything out there that's going to help us. It's better than what we have that doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Yeah or doesn't tie up money in the future that I don't want to tie up. You know, I think there's players that maybe you could look and say, yeah, that guy might be able to score 20 goals for you, but he, he's going to cost you more money than he's worth, and then you're going into next year with your hands tied, and I don't have any interest in that. If there's a player that, that's out there, and I, I'm thinking that there will be one or two that present themselves uh, that fits into to our situation financially and that can help us put a few more pucks in the net, then that's great. And if not, then I don't see any reason why the players we have, you know, can't come back and have better years. I mean, they, they, uh, even with the years they had, we, we had a pretty successful season. Okay, and the, the, the question everybody asks you uh, this off season: what about Trevor Linden? Yeah, you know, Trevor and I have been in contact several times in the last few weeks. When he's not biking. He's back from his trip. Oh, so yes, okay. Yeah, he's yeah, back yeah. from Europe. I guess it, was, uh, <laughs> it wasn't exactly a, you know, a, a, a little <laughs> stroll down the side yeah. of the street. I think it was a pretty significant ride for him. But, um, you know, we've had a couple more talks, and, and uh, you know, I would expect in the next week or two we'll talk again. What about Jan Bulis? Uh, I haven't talked to Yanni this time, um, and again, I wouldn't rule that out. Uh, but I, I would say that you know, I, I am looking at this point, if, if I can see what's out there between now and camp, and if I can find a player that's with a little bit more offensive flair, that, that would be a priority. Yeah. Did you like the way he played last year? Because I, 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 before Christmas, uh, you know, you looked the way he handled the puck. It was like a grenade. And then all of a sudden, he has this conversation with his dad at Christmas after he made all the complaints. Mm -hmm. And his game just turned around to the point where uh, Elaine was using him at the end of games constantly in, a, in defensive situations. Um, from that point of view, you must have been pretty happy. Yeah. 
Yeah, no question. You know, I thought Yan played pretty well. Yeah. I really did. I thought he was, uh, once he got comfortable with his role and yeah. and uh, wasn't thinking about scoring goals all the time, I thought he was a, a good player for us. He was a very good penalty killer. Uh, his speed was helpful. Uh, and, again, that's why I wouldn't rule out bringing Yan back. There's no question about that. But uh, I still want to pursue some other things first. We're talking with Dave Notice, the uh, general manager of the Vancouver Canucks. You've got it on the Team 1040, also on Rogers Sportsnet. Dave, just one more question before we get to the boards. And that has to do with the, the kids that are coming up. Uh, who do you see as the big surprise, the next Kevin B. Exit? I mean, a year ago, we were talking about Luke Verdon, and this is the guy. We already penciled him in as the top four. That didn't work out, but B. Exit well, was Notice under the... was talking about Jesse Schultz. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who do you like to, to turn heads at training camp that are going to be better than most people think? I think there's a number. I mean, and Dave and I have had this discussion offline a couple of times, but it, there's we have a number of, of, I think, young players that are coming up. Whether or not they're capable or, or ready to step in and be regular contributors at this point, I, I don't know that. Um, I would expect that Luke and Alex Edler are going to have good camps and have a chance to push for a job. Uh, but the one guy that I, you know, I, I've had a short period of time watching because he joined us in Manitoba uh, is Mason Raymond. And, and um, if he can put some weight on, I don't think there's any reason why he can't play uh, very quickly, whether or not it's you know the yeah. middle this year or next year. But uh, you know, here's a guy that like everyone knows. When we talked about Jonathan Taze, and that's a guy that everyone knows what kind of player yeah. he is. Well, he was a second-team All-Star, and Mason was a first-team All-Star, and that's the type of prospect that we think he is. He's just not at this point. He's not a man. He has to turn himself into yeah. one. And and if he doesn't, he'll never play. And if he does, he can be a very good player for what us. What do you project him as? Uh, like a top a, six four. Top six four. Really? Yeah. yeah he's, he's, he's got that much potential. Yeah. Yeah, good puck mover, excellent uh, foot speed, um, great vision. He's a you know he's a late bloomer. He was a go- he was. I was not just going to say, how did you manage to steal him? Well, he was he was a he, you know I'm not sure of his height when he was 16, but he was probably was five nine. Yeah. You know he wasn't very big, and he he's kind of one of those kids that grew late. Um, I don't think he was even thinking about pro hockey. He just turned into a you know a, a taller kid. He's you know over six feet now, and you know he had a great year for ca- for cameras, and then moved on to to college hockey in Minnesota Duluth and, and uh, you know, Ronnie DeLorme really loved the kid and we, we picked him in the second round. Michael Grabner, how far away is he? Well, I'd give him the same answer actually. Yeah. He, he's, um, he has to get stronger. I mean, that's Michael's, uh, Michael's problem right now is weight. Um, it's not anything else. I know that there, there was an issue. People thought that uh, he didn't have the year that, that people uh, were expecting out of him. Um, you know, Michael Grabner, I think he was second or third in the Western Hockey League in goals, and uh, of the top five, I think he led the league in goals per game. He is a goal scorer. He's not a passer. He's not a guy that's going to set up any players. Um, but uh, he's a guy that if he has the right center, he can score. Now, he can't do it at 165 pounds. He's got to do it at 190 pounds, and, uh, you know, he's a, a guy that's worked very hard to put some weight on and, and keep it on. we got a full board of people who do want to talk to you. It's hard to believe. that you know, We say it very often on the show, there's only two seasons in Vancouver, hockey season and waiting for hockey season. <laughs> so, anyway, to the boards we go. 2-0 team, 2-0-8-3-2-6. We've got Dave Notice, the general manager of the Vancouver Canucks. 